In this video, I'm going to use the M technique to find the optimal solution to the linear programming problem. Maximize set, which is equals to 5x1 minus 2x2 plus 3x3 subject to the constraints x1 plus 5x2 plus 2x3 is equals to 30. x1 plus 5x2 plus 6x3 is less than or equals to 40. And the variables x1, x2, x3, they are greater than or equal to 0. So we are given that linear programming problem. And the first step is to write the problem in standard form. So in standard form, I start by looking at uh, this uh, constraint there, x1 plus 5x2 plus 2x3 equals to 30. When you are using the M technique and we have a constraint which is an equal to sign, we have to add an artificial variable. So uh, we add an artificial variable a1 so that the equation becomes x1 plus 5x2 plus 2x3 plus a1 is equals to 30. I will now move on to the second constraint, x1 plus 5x2 plus 6x3 less than or equals to 40. When we have a less than or equal to constraint, we add a slack variable. So I will add a slack variable, which I will call s1, and we have x1 plus 5x2 plus 6x3 plus s1 is equals to 40. The next thing there, I would need to look at uh, the objective function there. When we are using the M technique, and we are having a maximization problem. We have to penalize the artificial variables that we would have added. We will need to penalize them into that objective function there. So in this case, we only added in one artificial variable, the a1. So we have to penalize that uh, artificial variable into the objective function. So since this is a maximization problem, it will be minus m a1. So would have our objective function is equals to z is equals to 5x1 minus 2x2 plus 2x3 minus ma1. Then go on and standardize that set. Make the right hand side equals to 0. And then we have z minus 5x1 plus 2x2 minus 3x3 plus ma1 is equals to 0. And the m that we are looking at there is a very large number as compared to the coefficients of the objective function there so i can set any number for example the 100 is large as compared to the 5 minus 2 and the 3 there so i set my m to be equal to 100 so when i set my m to be 100 our equation then becomes set minus 5x1 plus 2x2 minus 3x3 plus 100a1 is equals to zero so we have uh, those are uh, three equations there then we want to have our tableau there so i would draw a table and we have our set and the x1 the x2 and x3 they are assumed to be zero so they don't appear in the rows of the initial tableau so for the first equation we have uh, the artificial variable there the a1 so i write my a1 for the second equation we have uh, the select variable s1 then for the columns we would have our x1 x2 x3 and the artificial variable a1 and the select variable s1 and the solution now looking at the first equation here its coefficients the coefficient of x1 is a minus 5 the coefficient of x2 is a 2 the coefficient of x3 is a minus 3 the coefficient of a1 is a 100 the coefficient of s1 we don't have s1 in this equation so the coefficient is zero the solution what is on the right hand side that's a zero i now move on to the second equation here look at its coefficients the coefficient of x1 it's a one and the coefficient of x2 it's a five the coefficient of x3 is a two and the coefficient of a1 it's a one the coefficient of s1 we don't have s1 in this equation so the coefficient there is a zero the solution which is what is on the right hand side that's a 30. i now move on to the next equation this one here look at the coefficients and the coefficient of x1 is a one the coefficient of x2 it's a five and the coefficient of x3 it's a six the coefficient of a1 we don't have a1 in this equation so the coefficient is a zero the coefficient of s1 is a 1. On the right hand side, it's a 40. So our solution there is 40. 
So that's what we are having now. But what that table is saying is uh, the solution for Z is a zero. The solution for A1 is a 30. The solution for S1 is a 40. The X1, X2, X3, they are not appearing in the rows, so they are all zeros. That's what that table is saying. So if we substitute uh, these values into the objective function there, what we would see there is we would say that uh, Z plus 3000 is equal to zero, or it would be saying Z is equal to minus 3000. But in our table, we are saying Z is equal to zero. So there is an inconsistency there. And uh, to eliminate that inconsistency, we have to make the coefficient of the artificial variable in the objective function to be zero. So the coefficient of uh, the artificial variable in the objective function is this one that I've highlighted. We need to make it zero there. So that's uh, the next step. We need a zero on the part that I've highlighted in red there. So to have a zero there, we can make use of elemental row operations. And uh, for the elemental row operations, what we have to check there is we have a one on this position. So what you can do is we can multiply the one by 100, then subtract it from that 100. So what we will do there, the row operation is we transform row Z to row Z minus 100 or row A1. So we are multiplying this row by 100, then subtracting it from this Z row. So I will draw a table and have my X1, X2, X3, A1, S1 solution, then the Z, then the A1, then the S1. So what you are saying, row Z, we are transforming to row Z minus 100, row A1. So what we would have there is minus 5, minus 100, and it will give us minus 105. Then uh, the next one is 2 minus 500, and it will give us minus 498. And the next, it will give us minus 3 minus 200, which gives us minus 203. Then 100 minus 100, which will give us a 0. 0 minus 0, a 0. 0 minus 3,000 to give us minus 3,000. For the row A1, we are not changing it, so we write it as the 1, the 5, the 2, the 1, the 0, the solution, the 30. The third row again, we are not changing it, write it as it is the 1, and the 5, and the 6, and the 0, and the 1, the solution, and the 40. So that's the tableau that we are having now can just put it at the top there so that I look at the first iteration. So for the first iteration, we start by looking at the optimality test, checking if the solution is optimal. To check if the solution is optimal, we look at the coefficients of the objective function. This one here. So a solution is optimal if all those coefficients are non-negative. But in this case, we are having there are some there that are negative there. So the solution is not optimal. The next step is to find the entering variable. The entering variable is uh, the variable which has the most negative coefficient. The most negative coefficient there is this minus 498. So we'll take the, the x2 to be the entering variable. So we'll now go on to the next step, which is to look at uh, the leaving variable. But for us to find the living variable, we need to identify our pivot column. Our pivot column is the one with the entering variable. So we said x2 is the entering variable. So this is our pivot column. So we we'll use that for finding the living variable. So for us to find the living variable, we have to find the ratio. The ratio is given by the solution divided by the coefficient. We will be looking at coefficients in the pivot column that are greater than zero. So coefficients in the pivot column that are greater than zero, we have this one here, a five. So for our ratio, it will be the 30 divided by the five. The solution divided by the coefficient and it will give us a six. Then the next coefficient that is greater than zero, which is in the pivot column, we have a five here. So we divide this solution by the 5 and we get an 8. The leaving variable is the variable which has the smallest ratio. 
In this case, uh, the smallest ratio is a 6. So our living variable there will be the A1. So we have uh, that's uh, the living variable, the A1. The next step now, we need to have a one where we have uh, the intersection of uh, the pivot column and the living variable. So that coefficient is the one that I've highlighted there, the five there. At that intersection, we need a one on the five that is highlighted in green there. So I will draw another table and on the table we would have x1, x2, x3, a1, s1, the solution, our set. But in this case, we say that x2 is the entering variable and it was repla it's replacing the a1. So where we had a1 there, we are now putting x2. Then the next one, we put the s1. So for us to get a1 here where we have the 5, we just divide by 5. So the row operation that we have to use there is we transform row A1 to 1 over 5 row A1. We divide each and every element of that row by 5. So that is the row which will give us row X2 in the new table there. So we have 1 divided by 5 and it's 1 over 5. 5 divided by 5, it's a 1. 2 divided by 5, it's a 2 over 5. 1 divided by 5, it's 1 over 5. 0 divided by 5 is a 0. 30 divided by 5, it gives us a 6. Any other elements which are not on that intersection, which are not on the position of the green element there, they should be 0. So we need a 0 there. So for us to have a 0 there, we can make use of this one. Because if we have minus 498 there, to have a 0, we have to add 498. So what we can do is we transform or row z to row z plus 498 row x2. That is, we multiply row x2 by 498, then we add it to row z. So what we get there, when we perform the operations, we get that the first coefficient is a minus 5.4, the next one will be 0, then the next one minus 3.8, then the next coefficient 99.6, the coefficient of S1 is a 0, and our solution will be a minus 12. On the next step, we also need a 0 here on the position of this 5. We can just make use of this row A1 here. So we subtract row A1 from row S1. So what we'll do is row S1, we transform it to row S1 minus row A1. And what we'll get there is 1 minus 1 gives us a 0. 5 minus 5, it gives us a 0. 6 minus 2, it gives us a 4. 0 minus 1, it gives us a minus 1. 1 minus 0, it gives us a 1. 40 minus 30, it gives us a 10. So this is the table that we are having. And we can now go on to the next iteration, which is iteration number 2. We start by the optimality test, checking if the solution is optimal. The solution is optimal if all the coefficients are non-negative. So we are looking at the coefficients of the objective function there. Are they non-negative? The answer is no. There are some there that are negative. So the solution there is not optimal. So if it is not optimal, then we go on and look at the entering variable. The entering variable is the variable with the most negative coefficient. The most negative coefficient is this one there, the minus 5.4. It's corresponding to x1. So the entering variable there is x1. So if x1 is the entering variable, the column with x1 will be our pivot column. So our pivot column is this one here. And we need the pivot column so that we get the living variable. So for the living variable, we need to calculate the ratio. The ratio, which is the solution divided by the coefficient. We are looking at coefficients in the pivot column that are greater than zero. Coefficients in the pivot column that are greater than zero, we only have this one here. So we divide the solution, the six, divided by one over five, and we get a 30. Since we are only having one ratio, that will be the living variable. So the living variable in this case is on the x2. 
So when we have obtained the living variable, the X2, we now need a 1 at the position there where we have the intersection of the pivot column and the living variable. And all the other elements in that column must be 0. So I will draw another table and we have the columns there, x1, x2, x3, a1, s1, solution, the ratio. Then we have our set. But the x2, we say it is the living variable. The entering is x1. So we would have x1. And then the next is the s1. So we said we need a 1 here on this position where we have the 1 over 5 there. So to get a 1 there, we multiply the 1 over 5 by 5. So the elemental row operation that we do there is we transform row x2 to 5 row x2. That will give us the row x1. So 1 over 5 times 5 gives us a 1. 1 times 5 it gives us a 5. 2 over 5 times 5 gives us a 2. 1 over 5 times 5 is a 1. 0 times 5 is a 0. 6 times 5 is a 30. So we are done with uh, this one here. We now need a 0 on this position where we have the minus 5.4. So to get a 0 there, we can make use of this one here. So what we can do is we can multiply row x1 by 5.4 so that we have a 5.4 which we add to minus 5.4 so that we get a 0. So the row operation that we use there is row z we transform it to row z plus 5 over 4 row x1. So when we perform that row operation there we would have a minus 5.4 plus 5.4 and it will give us a 0. 0 plus 5.4 times 5 and it gives us a 27. Minus 3.8 plus 2 times 5.4 gives us a 7. 99.6 plus 5.4, it gives us a 105. 0 plus 0, it gives us a 0. Minus 12 plus uh, 5.4 times 30, it gives us a 150. Here on this position, we already have a 0. So we will just have to write that row as it is. The 0, the 0 the 4, the minus 1, 1, the solution, a 10. So that's the table that we are having now. So I can just put it on top there so that we go to the next iteration, iteration number 3. We check if the solution is optimal. So we look at the coefficients of the objective function. And those coefficients are this one there. If the solution is optimal, or oh, the coefficients must be non-negative. In this case, those coefficients are non-negative. Therefore, the solution is now optimal. So I can go on and write the optimal solution. We are saying the set its solution here, so 150. So we have set is equals to 150. The x1 is solution there, say 30. So we have x1 equals to 30. We don't have x2 on the rows there. So its solution is 0, so we have x2 equals to 0. We don't have x3 in the row there, so its solution there is a 0. So the solution there is x3 equals to 0. So what we are having there is the optimal solution is z is equals to 150, which occurs when x1 equals to 30, x2 equals to 0, x3 equals to 0.